the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, Dr. Gillespie, as you can see from these x-rays, Yukon Joe Moran is ready to be discharged. Yukon Joe Moran. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't tell me you're letting just one patient get you down. Jimmy, that man's as phony as the fruit on a woman's hat. Yukon Joe. I don't think he's ever been further north than the Bronx. Well, he'll be off our hands and out of our hair in another hour, so cheer up. Well, I wasn't even thinking of him until you mentioned him. No? Well, then what is on your mind? It's Parker. Oh, well, that's why you've been so grumpy, pining away with love for the fair Parker. Ah, oh, no, nothing <laughs> of the sort. That's ridiculous. No, no. You know it. It's just the way she's been acting lately. Mark my words, Jimmy, she's up to something. I haven't noticed anything. Well, I have. She's been leaving the hospital at odd hours and making mysterious phone Which calls. Which wouldn't by any chance be making you jealous. Oh, jealous. By the great horn spoon, Jimmy. My interest in Parker is purely professional. Mm -hmm. I'd be just as concerned about any nurse on the staff. Of course, Dr. G, of course. I understand mm -hmm. perfectly. Uh, Hey, you know, I could ask Diana to look into it, living in the nurse's quarters with Parker. She might know what's going on. Oh, but since your interest is purely professional, I'm sure you wouldn't stoop to such tactics. I couldn't think of such a thing. Certainly not. I could ask Diana myself if I wanted to go snooping. I know. Of course, if you can't restrain your curiosity, I can't control what you do. Thank you, Dr. G. And if I get any information, you... Uh, won't mind if I discuss it with you, will you? If you feel there's anything I should know for the good of the hospital, of um, course. Or right. well, what do you say? Shall we go to lunch? Never mind lunch. Let's go up and toss Yukon Joe out on his igloo. <laughs> yes, sir, I found nuggets as big as hen's eggs every time I suck my... Well, hello, Doc. Come on in. I was just telling Dr. Carew and Miss Park about my diggings up at Moosehead Rock. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, it was most interesting. I, uh, I'd i better be making my rounds, though. You will excuse me. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I, um, I just happened to stop in, Dr. Gillespie. Mr. Moran was showing us his scrapbook, and, uh... And, and I... so you forgot to get him his clothes so he can get out of here. Now, go on and get him. Well. Well, Doc, how am I doing? Oh, ankle's practically healed, Joe. Use a cane, favorite for a few days, you'll be all right. Well, I'm grateful to you. Hmm. And when I get back to Moosehead Rock, I'm going to send you a poke so full of gold, you won't hardly be able to lift it. <laughs> no, we'll skip the gold, Joe. Just make sure to see the cashier on your way out, won't you? Well, you, I don't think you fellas trust me. Do I look like the type who'd try to beat a hospital bill? <laughs> Why, I'm loaded. Then see the cashier. He'll help you unload. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. Goodbye, Yukon Joe. Goodbye. And don't forget, if you're ever in the Yukon, lock me up. We will. 
And if you ever break your ankle again, break it in Philadelphia, will you? <laughs> Jimmy, hmm? did you notice how interested Parker was in that phony and his scrapbook? Yeah. You gone Joe and his team of huskies. <laughs> Probably had the pictures taken at Coney Island. Just the same. Parker was interested, uh, as you say. Maybe she's thinking of doing a little gold digging of her own. On him? Well, then she'd better borrow a dentist drill. All his gold's in his teeth. <laughs> ah, who cares what Parker does? Well, are you going to see Diana or aren't you? Oh, I'm going, Dr. G. I'm going. Uh, uh. <laughs> Funny that you should ask about Parker just now, Jimmy. Why funny, Diana? Because of, oh, there are a few things I've been wanting to tell you, uh, Dr. Gillespie. Oh? Uh -huh. You know that little house on Long Island? The one Parker inherited when her aunt died? Oh, sure. <laughs> Parker's pride and joy. That's where she plans to live when she retires. Not anymore, Jimmy. She's selling it. Selling it? Mm -hmm. Why? She'd never do that. Diana, are you sure? Yes, Jimmy. Huh. Oh, and Dr. Gillespie's right. There is something wrong. Well, as long as I've told you this much, I might as well tell you the rest. Mm -hmm. Parker withdrew her entire savings from the bank this morning. No. Jimmy, she must be in some kind of trouble. Oh, yes. It sounds like serious trouble selling her home, using up her life savings. But, but why, dear? I don't know. But she hasn't seemed unhappy. As a matter of fact, she's been singing. Singing? <laughs> Parker? <laughs> the same song oh, over and over that. again. Something about a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Pot of gold. Uh-huh. You look as though that might mean something, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I diagnose that as the number one symptom of Parker's ailment. You mean she's ill? One of the oldest diseases known to man, or, or woman. Gold fever. Uh-huh. So that's it. I'm afraid so, Dr. Gillespie. Well, we'll soon find out. Parker! Parker! Pot of gold, rainbow. Oh, did you call me, Dr. Gillespie? <laughs> sit down, Parker. Go ahead, sit down. Well, why are you staring at me? Because I like you, Parker. And because I like you, I'm going to do you a big favor. What kind of a favor? Parker, how would you like to be the Diamond Queen of America? Diamond Queen of America? Yes, Parker, yep, why not? You see, I have a diamond mine. It's over in Brooklyn, right under the BMT subway. <laughs> I thought you might like to invest some money in it. But what are you talking about, Dr. Glenn? Well, what's wrong with buying a diamond mine, Parker? You've already bought a gold mine, haven't you? Or, or did he sell you the Brooklyn Bridge instead? I don't know what you mean. We mean you con Joe Moran. How much did he hook you for? He did not hook me. I got a bit of a sale. Parker, you mean you actually gave him money? I did not give it to him. I bought one-third interest in his mine at Moosehead Rock. Parker, why didn't you ask somebody about this before you did it? I did ask. Who did you ask? Some genius like Carew? Yes, Dr. Carew. Oh, no. Well, I did. <laughs> Mr. Moran sold Dr. Carew a piece of the mine, too. You mean Carew went into this deal? Yes, and you could have gotten in on it, too. If Dr. Gillespie wasn't always growling at poor Mr. Moran. Oh. Poor Mr. Moran. Poor Mr. Ah, Moran. Ah, ah, poor Mr. Moran left here. Richer than he arrived, thanks to you and Carew and your combined nimble brain power. Mm. Parker, do you realize what you've done? Well, I've just insured my future, that's all. Insured it? Sure. You've beaten it to death with that moosehead rock. But, but he said there's gold there. Only gold? No uranium? No platinum? Have you got a bill of sale, Parker? I have it right here. Don't, uh... Don't you think there is any gold at Moosehead Rock? Gold? <laughs> I don't even think there's a moose there. Oh. There mightn't even be a rock. Oh. And he took all my money. Oh. What do you need money for, after all, Parker? You're a one-third owner of a gold mine. Oh. 
Is that legal, Jimmy? I'm afraid so, Dr. Gillespie. Unless we can prove there's no gold there or doesn't have a claim on the land or something. Well, we better move fast and check on it. You find out about the claim, I'll look into the rest. Right. Well, what about me? What am I going to do? Just wait until we get back. And stay away from the patients. One of them's liable to steal your uniform. <laughs> Gillespie, this is terrible, oh. just terrible. And he had such an honest face. Oh. An honest face. Everybody who sells a gold mine has an honest face. Miss Potter, you talked me into this. I talked you into it. Yes? I asked you if it sounded all right. That's all I did. Ask an idiotic question of an idiot and you'll get an idiotic answer. Dr. Gillespie, how dare you speak to me like that? I, I've lost a thousand dollars. I'm not a well man. I'm... <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you're back, oh, Jimmy. Dr. Dr. Kildare, have you... Quiet! Quiet, you pigeons! What'd you find out, Jimmy? Well, Yukon Joe really owns the land, all right. Uh. He staked a claim years ago. Well. Oh. <laughs> so, Dr. Gillespie, perhaps you'll have a little more respect for my judgment in the future. But uh-huh. well, we still don't know if there's any gold there, Dr. Carew. We'll know as soon as we get an answer to my wire from the Alaskan Territorial. Dr. Gillespie... Telegram just came oh, in for you. Give it, give it, give it to me. That's uh, just what I've been waiting for. Well, what does it say? Is there any gold at Moosehead Rock? Uh, enough to make that bill of sale legal. Uh, so well, you see. Well, 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 oh. I said enough to make the bill of sale legal. Your gold mine or assays about sixty cents a ton. Only. Sixty cents a ton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the only reason it isn't profitable is because it costs $14 a ton to dig it out. Oh. Eh. Steady, Parker. Oh. oh. I'll help you, Jimmy. We'll just put her on the couch. She's fainted. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, Yukon Joe certainly picked one of the better hotels, Dr. Gillespie. What's the number? My clerk said it was 1407. Nah, right here. Come in, Garçon. Just put the champagne in the... Oh, Dr. Kildare and old Dr. Gillespie. Old Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> I was expecting the waiter with room, sir. We heard you. You always drink champagne for breakfast? Why, sure, Doc. Don't everybody? <laughs> Ain't that a good one? Don't everybody. <laughs> hey, hey, I thought you guys were doctors. You both look like a couple of embalmers. We've come to sell you a gold mine, Yukon Joe. Oh, I'm sorry, Doc. I ain't in the market. You better be in the market. Don't you realize you've swindled a poor woman out of the money she'll need to live on for the late years of her life? Now, just a minute, Doc. That swindle, that's a pretty hard word. No, we know you're within the law, Joe, owned by a very slim margin, but we're appealing to your sense of decency. Well, then let me appeal to yours, too, Doc. I spent ten years up in the north, freezing to death, eating dried fish, talking to nobody but myself, and an occasional wandering Eskimo. What are you driving at? Doc, did you ever hear the old saying, gold is where you find it? Yeah. So I finally found it at your hospital when Doc Carew and that nurse bought my mine. Besides, they can get even. Let them sell it now. Everybody wants to buy a gold mine. I take it, then, that you don't intend to return that money. 
Doc, me and that money is going to Florida. I figure it'll take me about uh, ten years before I feel warm again. Well, there's nothing more we can do, Jimmy. You, you better stop at the bank before we go back to the hospital. Wait a minute. Are you going to make up for Parker's losses? Well, she's got to have something set aside, Jimmy. She can't go on nursing until she's 90. So you're going to take your own savings and tell her that you got her money back, huh? Well, I can't tell her it's my money, can I? <laughs> she'd only got the wrong idea. Would it be the wrong idea, Dr. G? No, no, no. You just watch. Wait, you're driving, Jimmy. Hey, you're going the wrong way. You're headed downtown. That's right. I've got a little idea. Something that may make Yukon Joe change his mind. You'll never sell him that mine again. I wasn't thinking of selling it to him. If my plan works, we won't have to sell. He'll be chasing us, wanting to buy. Here we are. Jimmy, this is the office of the Star Herald. Now, wasn't the editor of the Star Herald a patient of ours a few months back? And didn't Parker take care of him? And didn't he write an editorial calling her another Florence Nightingale? Jimmy, do you think... We can you... ask, Dr. G. We can ask. <laughs> Just want one single copy of it, Dr. Kildare? Yeah, that's right. Well, it's not quite ethical. Uh, what he did to Nurse Parker wasn't quite ethical either. All right. I'll print one special issue. Oh, thanks. That's wonderful. Uh, make it a, a red headline, will you? Big gold strike at Moosehead Rock. And then under that, say that the man who found the gold was too late. The claim is already registered to Yukon Joe Moran. Yukon Joe Moran. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Now, uh, what'll I do with the copy when I get it printed? I'll just have a small boy slip it under the door of room 1407 at the Royal Plaza Hotel. After that, it's up to Yukon Joe. All right. Just leave a message that he's wanted at the hospital immediately. Goodbye. That Carew's home you were calling? Yeah, he's not there either. Have you found any sign of him? No. Well, I'd better find him and get that bill of sale before Joe gets here. Parker! Parker! Yes, Dr. Gillespie. I told you to find Dr. Carew. Now, where is he? I murdered him and put his body in the laundry hamper. Well, get him and bring him up here before... Parker, are you trying to be funny? I've been looking all over for him. What else can I do? I won't answer that, Parker. I'm tempted to, but I won't answer. Parker, you better check around some more. We'll get your money back, but we, we'd like to get Dr. Carew's back, too. All right, Dr. there. Diana's checking through the wards in the extension. He may be over there someplace. I'm going to get that. Dr. Gillespie speaking. Oh, good, good, good. Thank you. Uh, located, Carew? Oh, no, it's Yukon Joe. He's on his way up. Uh-oh. Well, we'll have to stall him. If he ever gets away from here and sees a regular edition of the Star Herald, Carew can kiss his money goodbye. Well, it's a seller's market, Jimmy. We can hold out and... Uh, it must be him. Come in. Well, well, my two favorite docs. If this ain't a nice surprise finding you here. Yes, isn't it? We usually spend most of our time at the zoo. <laughs> I guess you're kind of surprised to see me, though, eh? Ain't you? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Very surprised. Hey, you, um, you don't happen to have a late edition of the Star Herald around, do you? No, but, uh, the newsboy should be around with one in a few minutes. Why? Oh, uh, nothing. Nothing, Doc. I... Your, uh, ankle bothering you again, Joe? No. No, Doc, it's, um, it's my conscience. Oh, no, that's too bad, Jimmy. Really, too, but his conscience. Yeah. You see, I got to thinking about what I did, selling that mine. Doc, I come to do the right thing. I want to buy it back. Uh-huh. Well, it might not be so easy, Joe. You see, Nurse Parker's already sold her interest. It... To who? What crook is trying to pull a fast one? I bought Parker's share. You, you bought... Well, Doc, you can't do that. Remember what you said, Joe. Gold is where you find it. Well, that gave me a hunch, Joe. 
I figured that a man with a face as honest as yours wouldn't sell anything that wasn't worthwhile. Oh, but, Doc, you got me all wrong. Honest, I can't be trusted. You mean that mine isn't worth anything? Doc, it ain't worth a dime. <laughs> now, please let me buy it back. I don't know. You're acting as though it might be very valuable. What do you think, Dr. Gillespie? I think we should wait until we can confer with Dr. Carew. After all, he owns some of the stock, too. Now, look, now, look, Doc, I'm warning you. You better sell now before I change my mind. Have you uh, got the money with you, Yukon Joe? Hey, hey, Doc, my poke is loaded and I'm ready to buy. I'll give you, uh, well, 50 cents on the dollar. 50 cents on the dollar? Now, don't get excited, Dr. Gillespie. We should consider Joe's offer. Oh, our newsboy is coming across the grounds now. Perhaps after we've uh, read the headlines, had some... Uh, all right, all right, all right. You talk me into it. Uh, full price right now. I uh, was figuring on a little profit. Oh, now, Doc, will, will you talk to him? He's murdering the deal. I think we'd better do business right now, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah, yeah, here, here's your door. And here's your bill of sale. And there's the door, Yukon Joe. Yes, yes, I, I'll be mushing on. <laughs> If you'd given me a little time, Jimmy, I'd have had his eye teeth. Why, <laughs> you old Missouri horse trader. <laughs> Parker! Parker! Did you call me? Uh, where's my money? Did you get it back? Yes, 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 yes. Will you keep quiet for a minute? Well, I keep quiet. Now, let me tell you something. If it wasn't for you letting all kinds of patients get admitted to this hospital... Are you blaming No, 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 both of you. There's no harm done. Except a nitwit Carew, where the devil can he Wherever be? he is, it's too late now. There's Yukon Joe down on the lawn with the newsboy buying up every copy of the Star Herald. <laughs> <laughs> wait till he compares him with a copy he's got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wait. <laughs> Good afternoon, Carew. Where have you been? Dr. Carew, we've been searching for you high and low since early this morning. Well, I'm afraid I had some very important business. And I'm afraid you've missed some very important business. We had Yukon Joe Moran here this morning. We could have gotten your money back. Oh, could you indeed? Yes. Well, it so happens that I saw Mr. Moran myself at his hotel, and I think I handled the entire affair rather nicely. Oh, you mean you got your money back, too? I did not. I made an additional investment with Mr. Moran. You what? Miss Parker, the interference of these men has cost you a small fortune. Mm -hmm. Carew, what have you done? I bought Miss Parker's share of the gold mine you so foolishly resold to Mr. Moran. Oh, no. Oh, yes. You mean that uh, gold mine is really worth something? Worth something. It's the biggest gold strike in the history of the Yukon. Wow. Oh, and you... You made me sell it. Just a minute, Parker. Dr. Carew, what makes you think there's any gold up there? This, Dr. Kildare. The Star Herald. Look at that headline. Big gold strike at Moosehead Rock. Oh, for the love of Pete. Now, Dr. Gillespie. You see what you've done? Oh, now, be Shut up! Dr. Carew, where'd you get that paper? Where did I... Well, uh, what earthly difference could that make? Now, Dr. Carew, I want to know. Well, now, let me see. I went to Mr. Moran's hotel this morning. He left the door to his room wide open, and this was in there. And so, when he came back, you let him sell you Parker's share of the mine, too. I had quite a time persuading him, but I did. <laughs> now, what do you think of that? Parker, I think you'd better prepare a room for Dr. Carew. Prepare a room? But I'm not ill. You're going to be, Carew. You're going to be. Sit down, Dr. Carew. We've got something to tell you about the facts of life. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
once again the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. I just finished my work, Dr. Gillespie. Need me for anything else before I go? Well, if it isn't Gold Nugget Parker, the queen of the Klondike. You don't have to be so mean to me, do you? Oh, I'm sorry, Parker. You you can go. Good night. Good night, Dr. Kildare. Good night, Parker. You know, money isn't everything, Dr. G. She could do with some cheering up. Maybe a movie or something. You and Diana are going to a movie? We sort of planned on it. Well, then... Why don't you ask me to come along? And Diana could ask Parker. In that way, we could all go together and... Be... And Parker wouldn't get the wrong idea. Ah, splash. <laughs> all right, Dr. G. As of this moment, you're Parker's blind date. Uh, shall we make the girls pay for their own admission? Oh, well, that's not a very gentlemanly thing to do, Jimmy. Well, we don't want them getting the wrong idea, do oh, we? Oh, <laughs> Jimmy Kildare, you get out of here. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Joel Murcott and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Georgia Ellis, and Peter Leeds. Dick Joy speaking.